Uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, Raylene Castles, the head of Sport New Zealand, the woman who was head of the Australian Rugby Union when it went nuclear on Israel Folau for having religious views, which included certain views on the afterlife of, of homosexuals. Raylene Castle held a press conference in Wellington at the headquarters of Sport New Zealand to release guidelines about transgenderism in New Zealand sport. Now, anyone who was expecting, uh, if you like, a definitive answer as to whether or not at the elite level, transgender people, or in other words, men, uh, largely could compete against women, well, you weren't going to get it. What you got was a set of guidelines. Um, but what do those guidelines mean? And what business does Sport New Zealand and Raylene Castles, who it looked to me, and I'm just going to pre-announce this, looked to me like they were fulfilling some diversity checklist on their corporate, you know, manual. What business have they got dealing in these issues anyway? To discuss this, we are joined by a spokesperson for a group called Save Women Sport Australia, um, Ro, Rowena or Ro Edge. Uh, Ro joins us on the line now. Ro, lovely to have you on the platform. Welcome. Good morning, and it's um, Save Women Sport Australasia. Australasia, can't sorry. Aust the New Zealand part. Australasia. <laughs> it's a not so used term, but it means Australia. It means Australia and New Zealand, doesn't it? Exactly. And look, Sport New Zealand are fulfilling you know, che a checklist on behalf of Grant Robertson, who dictated that inclusion has to be prioritised over fairness and safety for females. So they are ca they're literally carrying out his wishes. So, because they're a government body, aren't they, Sport New Zealand? Yep, yep. They receive what supposedly is their job? Oh, gosh, I guess to promote and advocate for sport in New Zealand, to yeah. grow the participation in sport. Yeah. I mean, this this is not going to have that effect, though. I mean, yes, it will, well, it may help our transgender people, um, community feel more comfortable, but I think there's going to be, it's a bit like, you know, we have so much polarisation and division on so many issues now, and by forcing this through without bringing the community with them, I think it's actually, it could have the reverse effect and make it even more uncomfortable for them. Yeah, well, so, I mean, first, 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 let's just check out what do, and they are only guidelines, right? These aren't prescriptive well, laws. <laughs> what do they say and who do they, they affect or who are they directed at? So they literally say that anybody can self-identify into the the category of sport that they wish. And it can be just for the purpose of sport too. So, Sean, you could tomorrow turn up to your local tennis club and say, for the purpose of tennis, I would like to identify as a female. That club Well, you would could. To... You could. The guidelines suggest you should be allowed to. But if your tennis club said naff off... No, you... that, would be, that would be called discrimination. Yeah, but, 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 but what's, the, what's the penalty for that so-called um, discrimination? There is none in these yeah. guidelines, is there? Well, no, there is a process to go through, a disciplinary process that you would go through. If women, if women and girls objected to having a male in their changing rooms or in their sports teams, that would be called bullying and harassment, and there would be a dis disciplinary process as well. You know, when the draft came out, we thought it was bad, but this is even worse. But I come back to the point, these are only guidelines. Can't your local bowls club or tennis club tell Sport New Zealand to naff off? Well, we would hope they could, but in the in the third round of consultation, well, I call it consultation, but it wasn't, they told, um, well, they implied to all of our sporting leaders that they were not interested in funding sports that didn't adopt these guidelines. Ah, so they, so they, basically is we will chop you off of the knees for any government funding, lotto yeah. funding, anything else, if you don't go yeah. woke. Yeah, Exactly. And so we're hearing the language that, you know, these are just guidelines. They don't have to be followed. But we know from those webinars that there is a lot more behind the scenes and there will be a huge amount of pressure coming on our sporting bodies to implement these guidelines into their policies. Mm. Is this really worth it? I mean, how many... The transgender population, whatever you want to call it, is tiny, right? People with gen, genuine gender dysphoria is a tiny population though it's growing as a trend, I suspect, in New Zealand. Then, yeah, we take that just, yeah. then we take that tiny group and the number of those people actively involved in sport will be even smaller. It just seems ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, if there's so few, though, why do we need to compromise the entire female category? 
we should be finding a way to accommodate them. Uh, hey, Rowena, 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 we should remember too that there will be instances where Sheila's are going into blokes' dressing rooms and we might find that equally. Oh, look, I totally agree. I think it's an issue from both sides. I totally agree. But the one thing they're not going to do is steal your podium positions and pathways. Yeah. Now, every, you know, they, Sport New Zealand talk about community sport like it's just social sport. But literally, every sport that we play in New Zealand, up until you literally represent your country or have a contract with a sport, is community sport. You know, I went yeah. to watch my nephew play the under-14 um, national tennis, tennis nationals on Monday. That is community sport. That is the best tennis players from around New Zealand. That's community sport. And every single one of our elite female athletes started their pathways in community sport. If they've got thrashed at that lower level, do you think that they would have the motivation to continue and succeed to the highest level? And then who's going to inspire our next generation of females? Yeah. So it, you might think yeah, it's just yeah. more, but why should, why should anyone miss out when fairness is just obliterated? Yeah. And Rowena, it seems to me that real New Zealand, the New Zealand community has a view, does have a view, and I'm sure if you polled you'd get the result. And that is We the, have actually yeah, polled. Yeah, enough, yeah. Yeah. Okay, tell me the results of the poll about this issue. So we polled because Sport New Zealand have spent over four million dollars on surveys over the last few years and not once have they asked anyone how they felt about this issue. So we raised <laughs> money and we did curia polling and we found that only twenty seven percent of Kiwis actually think this is a good idea. Fifty five percent are totally opposed, nineteen percent were unsure. Wow. And you can tell by yeah. any of the posts that go on social media, by any of the media outlets, they close the comments because they don't want to deal with the kickback. Yeah. And that's Kickly the thing, that in the real world, in the real world, your average New Zealander doesn't want a bloke competing against Sheila's. No. No, we don't want our girls to lose out on opportunities. We don't want... You know, we've, we've got instances of this happening already. You know, in roller derby, women have left a sport they love after being hurt by a man who just self-identified for the purposes of roller derby to join the women's team on the basis of being female, apparently. And when they raised concerns, they were accused of bigotry and transphobia and pushed out of the sport they had loved and have been playing for years. Now, we've got Cycling Club in New Zealand where a male cyclist who is 49 holds three female trophies for the season, including Female Rider of the Year. Do we? Is, is, I do, sorry, I was unaware of that. What's his name? Um, I, do I want to mention his name? I'm quite happy to. Katie Richards of Capity Cycling Club. Okay. But they, to be fair, they're only operating under the rules that Cycling New Zealand allow. They're the same rules that allow... Kate Weatherly to take so many podium positions and prize money off females in downhill mountain biking now. So, you know, if, if you've got your national sporting bodies bringing in these rules, the local sports have to actually run with them. I'd call it gender cheating, Rowena. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with you, Sean. Can oh. you imagine the uproar, though, if the male division was opened up so drug-cheating males could participate in it? Can you imagine the uproar? Oh, look, I'm not <laughs> going to say that these people are using drugs. Let's not call them drug addicts. But no, there's but no the way in, a, in your right mind... Started. Yeah. I, 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 just, I just can't imagine having any sense of self-respect or self-satisfaction... If with all my kit and tackle and everything intact or, or not, I, I I beat women in sport. I what a fraud! What a fraud you'd be, Rowena. So we've yeah. got these guidelines, and because of the way money is doled out to amateur sports and community sports in this country, there is a bit of a a stick that comes with this that Sport New Zealand can exercise. It is clearly yeah. not something that the wider New Zealand community wants. So how do you roll it back and have you got a commitment from groups who may in future be in government to roll this back? No, and that's the challenge. You know, National and Act really need to stand up. You know, Winston Peters did a post yesterday supporting or, you know, oppos in opposition to this, whereas National and Act are just standing back and not saying anything. They're saying it's up to the sports, but they're not saying that they're going to So they're not even engaging on the fundamental sort of morality or ethics so, of this? 
No, and you know, I've had discussions with National and they, they're so scared of the kickback from the media that they just don't want to broach it. It's much easier to stay under the radar. But you know, I challenged them. They were quite happy to, to put up the kickback for putting criminal young criminals into boot camps. They're quite happy to tolerate that, but they're not happy to tolerate it to sticking out for half the population for the fairness in sport. Yeah, well, I think it's for all of us. And, and fairness is something that affects uh, an entire yeah. uh, society, Ro. So Winston Peters at present, the only person in a, well, and he's not in Parliament at the moment, who's prepared to say, we'd roll this back, we would get rid of these guidelines. Well, he's come out quite strongly against them, so I presume that he would, but I'll, yeah. I'll check that out. All right, we might but get yeah, him on and talk about it. The other thing yeah, I'd ask is, surely... Where this is going to land, and this is me crystal ball gazing, gazing somewhat, there's going to be a bowling club or, a, you know, or a curling club or some sort of club that stands up to this eventually and just says this is BS. There's going to be someone who takes the complaint, these tiny number of trans uh, activists we have will grab a lawyer and we'll have a court battle and it'll be tested in court, I imagine. Yeah, well, we would love to test it in court. I mean, what they've done is they've pretty much overruled Section 49 of the Human Rights Act that specifically allows for the exclusion of persons of one sex from participation in any competitive sporting activity where strength, size and stamina is relevant. They have just completely knocked that on the head. Oh, surely so, the Human Rights Commission will be in on this then. Oh, righty -o. The Human Rights Commission that has now conflated gender with sex. Unfortunately not. <laughs> We can't rely on our Human Rights Commission to stand up for women, Sean. <laughs> well, as I say, I, I, I think this this issue now transcends women. This is about what is fair in a society and, and to be honest, how loopy we, we want to appear and how yeah, crazy like, you know how we mad, want the world to be. Yeah, look, do you know how mad it's got? I don't know if you recall this, but a few years ago there's a British rapper called Zuby and he decided to take the piss out of people who say how biological men don't have any physical advantage over women. And my gosh, we have a lot of them in New Zealand who say that. Mm. So he identified as a woman while lifting weights and he broke the British woman's deadlift and bench press records without even trying. He's not a professional weightlifter. He just lifts weights. It was meant to be a joke to show how utterly idiotic this denial of biological reality is, but now that's our reality in New Zealand. It's amazing. And it is uh, our reality. I also imagine kind of, you know where this is going to come, right down to kids' sport, and there'll be some woke parent who thinks Johnny is Jenny because they want to be trendy with their friends at, at their branch of the Green Party. It's already, it's already happening. Oh, we no. were contacted by a mother who attended um, a girls' cricket, to um, cricket tournament for intermediate age, and there was a boy who identified as a girl who played in one of the teams. They were sharing accommodation all together. This young child was so much more superior, and this is pre-pupescent, right? Yeah. So much more superior in terms of their ability on the cricket pitch that they, you know, they shone above everybody else. The girls were not happy. None of the girls were happy. Oh, the but parents wouldn't be happy. The sport administrators shouldn't be happy. It's madness. And I'm sorry, Rita, incredible. I don't even feel... You know, if someone were to turn up and say, oh, I'll explain to you why this is a good idea, you just can't. This is a slam dunk argument to any reason. You know, the person. ridiculous thing was, if we were, could just all be more accepting of the diversity of our sex and, accept, and were more accepting so that people felt comfortable playing in the category of their biological sex and yeah. we created changing facilities where they felt safe, we could have inclusivity and we could have fairness without compromising anyone. Yeah. But instead, we've decided to go down this track that actually undermines all of that for females. Yeah. And like, Look, I don't have an issue, uh, uh, hypothetically, I'm in a changing room. Some guy who dresses like a Sheila comes in uh, in a skirt and puts his makeup on in the same changing room. I don't have an issue with that. I don't feel threatened by that and I don't feel uncomfortable like that. And I would imagine I'd certainly feel um, more relaxed than a woman who would put up with the same person. In, you know, in their changing room space. It just seems well, so impractical. It's, yeah, it's not just uncomfortableness, it's fear as well, Sean. You know, yeah. like, we have real safeguarding issues. You know, one in four women in New Zealand suffer sexual violence at some stage. Yeah, sexual unfortunately, that is true. You know, 
And so, but we, the, the thing that really guts me about these whole guidelines is they ignore all of that. It's all about the feelings of the very few while ignoring the feelings of half the population. Mm. We're not allowed to feel uncomfortable, apparently. We just have to suck it up yeah. and accept it or leave our sport. Yeah. Rowena, I'd love it if you'd uh, keep in contact on these examples that you've got. Uh, the problem with this sort of thing, if you do not keep an eye on it, suddenly it's entrenched and the madness is accepted uh, of the emperor having no clothes or having, it is. And, having the, the opposite gender's that, clothes. Yeah. yeah, and the problem that we have too is that these guidelines are very specific in that you cannot out anyone who is trans. So none of the sports who says will that? be able That's not against and, the law. In these guidelines, sports will not be able to disclose the biological sex of any competitors. Oh, that's so ridiculous. We're not, we're not going to know unless somebody speaks to us on the, on the side, which is what is already happening now. We've had it in so many different sports now. You know, a, a major golf tournament for women was won by a male transgender athlete a few years back. Did we hear that? No, nope. it cannot be disclosed. So we, we have people fearfully contacting us saying, look, this is happening, but I can't say anything. That's only going to get worse. Yeah, well, look, we might not name people, but we here on the platform are more than happy to tell the truth about what's going on here if you need an outlet for that. And I seriously make that offer because I just think we have to have honest conversations about this. And the idea that you protect, I'm sorry, transgender cheating, and the transgender cheat seems crazy to me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, me too. Look, I really appreciate that, Sean, and we yeah. would you up on that. Yeah. Ro, thank you so much for your time this morning, and uh, good luck with your endeavours. Happy holidays, I'm hey, look, saying now, too. Can I, just, yeah. I just ask everybody listening, like, can you please reach out to your local, regional and national sporting groups that you're, that you're affiliated with or have anything to do with and share your concerns? Because yep. we need, they need to hear other voices. They need to know that if they're going to make the decision to go against these guidelines, that they have the community support. support yeah. We can't be silent on this. Like, no more silence. <laughs> we have to speak up. Yep, I hear you, Runa. And I think we've got to get, with a change of government lightly, you've got to get buy-in to change from the Nats and Act yes. who have got a little bit of wokeism creeping into their... Uh, political planning. I, I, don't know, I don't know if it's wokeism, wokeism maybe more scaredyism. Yeah, 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 I get you. Hey, Ro, Ro thank you very yeah. much indeed. Lovely talking to you. That's uh, Rowena Edge, uh, spokesperson for Save Women's Sport Australasia, because Sport New Zealand, which funds a lot of our amateur and community sports, says, yeah, it's okay. It's okay for men to compete against women and we'll cut your funding if you think it's not in your sporting group.